Greetings, 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 everyone. Steve, Paracords of Kindness. How are you doing today? Hopefully, your weaving's been happy. Okay, what I have for you today is I'm going to show you how I make a stitched, modified, concrete jungle. It's not a very hard weave, and the stitching's not very hard, but it would take a little time. Um, I'll show you one I made. This one is gunmetal gray and it's stitched, which the three elements of stitching are all done in acid purple. And this one turned out really well. Those colors turned out really well together. The one we're going to be doing today is my quote unquote signature colors. The three colors I like using personally. This one is olive drab. And I've done the two side stitching runs in maroon, 95, mind you, and then the center stitch in gold, regular micro cord. I'll let you see it. I'll let you see the back of it. But for sizing purposes, as I tell people often, watch the video. And they'll always in the beginning show you the bracelet. But that split second when they flip it to the back side, look at how thick it is for sizing purposes. Now, I will give measurements. Measurements, the add to for sizing, and all that in the description below, right? Now, th those are the measurements I use. May be slightly different for you, but no matter. If you want to see how I make a stitched, modified concrete jungle, stick around because I'm going to give all the tips and tricks that this channel is known for. So stick around and we'll get right to it, folks. Okay, folks, I'm back and I'm set up. But before we get started, Let's get a couple of housekeeping issues out of the way, if you will. First off, let me say this. I say this in many of my videos. You've probably heard me say it before. You'll hear me say it again. I am not a filmmaker. I don't have the best camera. I don't have the best lighting, hence the shadow across here. But what I do know how to do is make a paracord bracelet. So if you've got the patience and you stick around and you listen to what I say... Hopefully, you will be able to make this bracelet. Okay, now, the next thing. I apologize that I haven't made any videos in quite a while. I won't go into all the details, but I recently had a major surgery. And I've been on bed rest, if you will. Recuperating, recovering, and letting my body heal. Um, I started a week or so ago back making bracelets, and now I'm to the point where I think maybe I can start doing some videos again. So, for the, you know, for my absence, I apologize. Okay, let's see. What's next? Shameless plug, as always. Uh, the bracelet we're going to do today is similar to this one right here. This would be a stitched modified sonic armor. The link to a tutorial for this will be in the descriptions and most likely in the cards also. Also, this one, the eccentric fishtail. I don't have a video on how to make the bracelet, but I do have a video on how I've done the stitching. For those who know me, when I make a bracelet, the first thing I do is grab my lacing needle or my stitching needle and I start poking holes, trying to figure out how can I stitch this thing. Where is a good pattern to stitch it, right? And I'm known for my stitching. So, with that said, if you want to know how to make the eccentric fishtail, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. But, I'll leave the link to how I did this stitching pattern in the description below and in the cards. Okay, now with that said, let's get to this. What we're going to do today, this is called a modified concrete jungle. Now, <clears throat> the original design was by Joe Clegg, and I've never actually seen that one, 
but this being the modified version was done by Cetus 550. Many of you know who he is. Um, and this tutorial actually comes from a pictorial on his Cetus Weaving Instagram account. If any of you are on Instagram, I'll put the link below to where you can see the actual pictorial for this. Um, now you're going to have to follow his that account in order to have, gain access to it, but I'll put the link below. Um, and when I went to make this, I realized there was no actual YouTube tutorial for this, so I decided, and I've had quite a people ask me about it, so I was like, you know what, let me make one, because I was going to make one for myself in colors that I like, the olive drab, maroon, and gold. Those are kind of, the black and red, and those, those three colors are kind of my signature colors. Those are the ones I personally like. So I figured if I'm going to make one, let's film it for YouTube, since I've had a lot of people ask me about it. Okay, now, let's see. Oh, what's next? Um, as always, all my all the measurements and all that stuff will be in the description below. And I'll tell you, like I tell many people, these numbers that I give, the cord link, the quote-unquote add to, I'll explain that in a second, are specific for my weaving style. Not everybody has the same style of weaving. Me, personally, I push it up as much as I can, and I pull it as tight as I can, you know, given that the knot will allow for it. There are some knots that you can't do that with because it will capsize them or distort the knot. So you can't pull them as quite as tight. But if, I, if you can, I pull it as tight as I can. And that tends to make for needing more cord for me. Now for you, maybe not. But for my weaving style, the numbers are below. They're a good starting point. And I'll say this. I've said this in a lot of my videos, and I'll say this again. I am, I would rather have plenty of cord and have, you know, like a five feet, five foot piece of scrap in the end that I have to cut off and be able to actually finish the weave than to get an inch or so down from the bottom and realize I didn't cut it long enough. Make sense? So, when you make it, you may have a whole bunch of cord left over compared to the numbers I've given. But that's why. Because my weaving style, everybody's slightly different. So take that into account. Um, okay, let's see. What's next? I have, I'm, I'm putting this one on a 15 millimeter or a 5 8 inch equivalent buckle. For those who don't know, I often try, I try to keep the buckle, the, the whatever buckle size I use, the width of it in proportion to the width of the bracelet. Meaning, I don't want to make one of these real narrow bracelets and put it on a big wide buckle. It doesn't look right to me. Right? So, I, in the description below, I would say a 5 8 inch or 15 millimeter equivalent for this bracelet. But, again, it all depends on your weaving style. I know sometimes, you know, if you weave the bracelet one way, it might be wider. If you weave it, just pulling it tighter and all that kind of stuff, it's not as wide. It's a little bit narrow. So everybody's a little, slightly different, right? But the numbers below are a good starting reference point. They don't be, they, they may not be exact, but it's a good starting point to, you know, calculate from. Okay, now, with that said, this weave is not really that hard. Um, I wouldn't say it's a beginner's weave, but then again, I wouldn't call this one an, an advanced weave either. If you can set up a four core strand, you got this one. You know, have, you have two even working ends and one color cord. You know, you don't have an offset working in. You're not having to splice two colors together to get it to come. Nothing like that. So it's not that hard. If you don't know how to set up the four core strand, I would recommend, first off, if you want to get into this and you want to get good at it, learn to set up two core strand, four core strand, six core strand, you know, eight, eight strand core, all these different variations of the course. Learn that. Learn that. That way you're not intimidated, because I know for me, when I first started, and I've got a few friends that 
they see that a bracelet is a four core strand and it, it's intimidating because they don't know how to do it and they and me personally I know I struggled until I got this down pat I struggled with this and I would see a bracelet that had a four strand core and I'm like Ugh. it made me not want to do it but I finally decided learn this learn the basics that way you don't struggle with that and you can focus your attention on getting the weave correct makes sense that's a tip um okay but like I said if you don't know how to do the four core strand there's a playlist the link to a playlist below what is it? Core strand setups. I forget exactly what it's titled, but it's down there. And it's, it's, I go through the basics of how to set up most of these core strands. Two, four, six, or whatever. Watch it. Learn those. I recommend, highly recommend learning that information. <coughs> okay, but with all that said, um, I think that's everything. Now this one, I'm making this one for myself. And I have a 7 inch wrist. Now to add two that I've put on here, um, here, let me measure this again and make sure. I've got it marked out as a, yeah, inch and five eighths. Okay, when I say add two, a lot of YouTube tutorials do not give this information. Hey, it's no fault. You know, we should all be able to do this. But what it is, I'll explain it this way. There are certain web pages you can go to. Uh, well, let me see. Let me, let me go back. Let me go back. Okay, I have a seven inch wrist. I know, and most of us know, that when you go to measure your jig from where these two buckle pieces connect here to where they connect down here, right, you cannot measure that at 7 inches. Why? Because the bracelet will be too short to go around the wrist. There's always this variable of the add to that you have to add to that, that 7 inches in order to get the correct measurement for your jig. And it's determined by the thickness of the bracelet. Right? The thicker the bracelet, the more you have to add to it. Now there's web pages and there's sites that use mathematics, you know, circumference, pi, radius, these kind of things where you can figure it out. Right? Okay. Um and I've 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 made a few of these, so I've already got that number down pat. Now for me, inch and five eighths, and I'll explain this to you. Wrist measurement plus add two equals jig measurement. Meaning my seven inch, seven inch wrist plus the add two of one and five eighths inch equals eight and five eighths inches. So that's what I measure from connection point here to connection point down here. Eight and five eighths inches. And that will yield an end result of a bracelet that will fit on my wrist. Make sense? I always have to take into consideration the thickness of the weave. Like I said, the thicker the bracelet, the more, the bigger that add to number is. And it's usually, um, I've been doing this a while, I can usually look at a bracelet and just, bam, this is how much you should do. Now, I'm not perfect in it, but I usually get it close. Um, usually, your add to is between an inch, an inch and a quarter. All the way up to, I've seen some bracelets two and a quarter, two and a half inches that you have to add to because they're so thick, right? But on average, they're about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters, give or take. That's about the, the average. Okay, now, with all that said, I know I've talked long enough. Let's get to weaving. Okay, for everybody, for anybody who's new to this channel, I appreciate you being here. Be sure to like, subscribe, click the bell icon, that way you get notified when I do bracelets. And uh, like I said, I'm not a filmmaker. Don't have the best lighting, don't have the best equipment. Um, not this section of the tutorial, but when I get to the stitching part, I often get out of frame. I, I, I'll be doing something over here and I apologize. Like I said, I'm not a filmmaker, but I know how to make a bracelet. And I am a teacher by nature. And I explain things, overly explain things, or thoroughly explain things, depending on the, your perspective of receiving this. <clears throat> but by you watch one of these, I may be long-winded, but I, you're going to know how to do it. I'm not going to tell you over here, under there, pull tight. I'm going to tell you how tight to pull it and in which direction 
to pull it. Tension consistency. It's not only about the amount of tension, but also the direction of tension. Make sense? And that's something I know a lot of YouTube channels, tutorials, they don't give that information. They simply give the mechanics. Over here, under there, pull tight. Over here, under there, pull tight. I give you that, but I'm going to, I, I, I want to teach you how to make a better bracelet. Makes sense? So my videos are a little bit longer than normal. But I guarantee you, you watch one, you'll know how to make the bracelet. Now you can always go down there, whether you're on your phone app or on, you know, your full size desktop computer. You can always go down there and hit that gear icon and it'll come up playback speed and you can speed it up or you can slow it down, whichever. Right? I, I watch a lot of YouTube videos at twice the speed and I absorb the information. But with all that said, Let's get to weaving. Like I said, this one's not that hard. It's, uh, like I said, measure it all out. Got the cord length. Two working ends of equal length. Four strand cord, equal length on the working ends. Okay, now, like I always do, I have went ahead and put my fids, stitching needles, lacing needles, whatever you want to call them, on the ends. And that tends to make it easier for the camera to see the mechanics, the overs and the unders of what I'm doing, right? Okay, so with that said, let me zoom in just a little bit so we can see this, and we'll get started. Okay, like I said, it's got a four core string. You can see it. One, two, three, four. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. <coughs> mm, that hurts. I just say the surgery, me coughing, that hurts. Okay. Um, Alright, start this off. Like many of these weaves, it doesn't matter if you start with the left side or the right side, but consistency. If I start with this left side and I go first, the next repetition, you start with the left side. That way you just get into the habit of being consistent. Right? Now there are some of these weaves I've done where I alternate it. If I start with the left one on this repetition, the next repetition I'll start with the right one. Why? Because it alters the pattern slightly. And I do that on purpose sometimes. But we're not going to do that on this one. This was pretty straightforward. It's a good looking weave. You've seen it at the inter in the introduction. So let's get going. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're gonna, I'm going to start with the left. We're going to go over three and under one. We say that over the first three and under one. And pull the majority of your slack through. Or the excess through. Alright, now we're gonna take the other one. The other side. The the we started with the left, now we're gonna go to the right. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to do it below this cord down here. So we're going to go over three and under one. Got that? We pull our excess through. And we basically formed this little X right here. Okay, now we're going to go back to this one. This cord on this side. Find the end. Now what we do is we're gonna we're gonna go to the middle in between the, the middle strands. So I've got four. We're gonna come up through that middle, right? Then we're gonna come up, but this first slot. First slot from this side, we're going to go down through there. And we're going to pull out the majority of the excess. All the while making sure we don't have any twists because it's going to tend, this cord, this cord back here is going to tend to want to twist on you. So you, we want to be mindful of our twist. I say that a thousand times mindful of our twist. Right? Okay, now we're going to do the same thing on this side. 
Find the end of your cord. We're going to go under through, and we're going to come up through the middle slot. Right? We're going to bring it up, and then up here, we're going to go through this first slot from this direction. Right there. And we pull our excess through. Now that right there is the mechanics of this weave. And we're going to repeat that all the way down. Now to tighten this up, I get that done right. Okay, whoa, let me get this right. Up there. That's what we want it up there. Yeah. Okay. To tighten this one up, I'm gonna show you how I did this. We come through here. And these two loops, let's get this up out of the way, she in the way. Okay, this is where we started. Went around, we went over three and under one, over three and under one. And then we've got these little loops on the back where it comes up through the center. We're going to grab these two loops. We see that? Where I'm grabbing it, I just kind of work it up to the top. And these two right here, we want to make sure that when we tighten this up, that then you see how right here, hopefully that can, you can see this on camera. You see how this one on this side is kind of on top of the other one? We don't want it that way. We want them next to each other, not overlapping. Right? We'll look back at, look back at the finished product. You see these two pieces right here of gray in the middle? They are side by side. That's the way we want them. Now this first one may not be, may, it might not because at the beginning of any brace, that the, when you start, everything is not quite in place right. But do the best you can, but as you go down, remember, you want them next to each other, not overlapping. So we pull these two tight right here. And this is, this is the way I've been doing it. I put my finger right here and push, push up toward the buckle. Reach down here. I grab this one and it tightens up this piece. And then I would grab back here the entire long working in and it's going to pull this loop out but make sure that it doesn't get a twist in it when you do and we want it to lay flat on your back side of that loop I'll show you an ex example of what I'm talking about in, in a moment Once you get it there, just take it. Now you can take your thumb and kind of roll that piece up to get it as tight as you want it as you're pulling this piece back. All right? Okay, now what I'm talking about on the back, I'll show you over here on this one so, we'll, so you can see what I'm talking about. The way those two pieces right there, they wrap around just so you understand the mechanics of this. You see how you got right here, that's one of those core strands. That's the outer core strand. And over here you have the outer core strand. Well, these two, right here where all these pieces are wrapping around, that's the two inner core strands. Well, you see how this piece of gray is wrapped around. It doesn't have a twist in it. Now, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you an example of one where it's kind of got a little bit of a twist in it. You see this one right here, it kind of, that cord has got a little bit twisted right there. We don't want it to look like that. we got to be mindful of our twist. And that piece, that little loop that we pulled on, that's where it wants to twist. So when you go to tighten it up, make sure that it doesn't twist. If it twists, pull it back out and twist your cord and get it correct before you completely give it the Type cinch. Does that make sense? That way all of these wraparounds on the back will look even. 
Even though this is the non-display side, we still want it to look pretty good. But like I said, I didn't do it perfectly. You can see right here where it's kind of got a little bit, and that one's probably the worst one. It's not completely twisted, but it's not completely straight either. Makes sense? Okay, but that's it. That's all there is to this one. It's not that hard. The mechanics are not hard. You just got to be mindful of that twist. So we're going to do this again. I know I've talked long enough. Do it again. We're going to go over three and under one. And under this one over here. Pull your slack through. Now pull your excess through. Most of it. Leave you a little bit there. Okay, now we take the other side. Find the end. Do the same thing. Go over three and under one. Pull your, pull your excess through. I got that. Now, because I've already got this in my hand, I'm going to do this side. So what we do now is we come from underneath through that middle slot. And we bring it up. And then we go back down in this first slot from this direction. We're using the cord on this side, so we go to the first slot on this side. And we'll just bring it down. And when you go to kind of tighten this up a little bit, this loop right here, we well, say this loop, you want to leave some of that because that's what we're going to use to tighten it all up. Like I said, like I do in many of these videos, this knot has to be tightened in sections. You can't just grab it here and expect it to tighten everything up because it won't. You have to do it in sections. Okay, so now we're going to go to this side. We'll find our end. We're going, to, we're going to go through that middle slot. Up through the middle slot. Basically, we're going to go under these first two and come up through the slot. Leaving this little loop right here. Now, we're going to come up above here. Since this is a cord on this side, we're going to go through the first slot on this side. Right? Don't count this one the, of the core strand, the first slot next to the core strand. And we're going to go down. And pull the majority of your excess. You see, it's got to twist it. We've got to get that out. And there we go. You can get these up out of the way. And we're going to come down here and grab these two loops. You're going to grab the top side of these loops and it's going to take out this part. Right? Now, see how they're overlapping? We don't want them overlapping. We want them side by side. Right? What I'll do, push up, reach back here, pull this one again, the top of that loop, which is tightening up this side and then take the, your, the working end we're going to tighten it up and it's going to tighten all that up making sure this has got, got a twist in it all the while pushing everything toward the top now we're going to switch hands and do the other side Pulling the top of the loop, and then grabbing the main working end, and pulling it, making sure that this doesn't have a twist. And I'm looking at, for those who don't, you can't see what I'm actually doing. I'm leaning my head to the side, looking down at an angle at that piece on the back, as I'm tightening it to make sure that it doesn't get twisted as I do that, right? And that's our second repetition. And that's all it is. We just continue all the way down. Alright, I'll do this one more time. Slowly. So you can see it. Over three and under one. Over these three and under one. And under this one. Pulling the majority of our excess through. And we grab this one. We get to, we find the end of it. 
do the same thing. We go over th three and under one, pulling our excess. Since I've already got it in my hand, I'm going to continue going up through the middle slot and then back down through the first slot on this side because we're coming from this side we go to the first slot on this side not counting this the core strand one core strand first slot we go down we pull the majority of the excess see how it's, it's wanting to twist right there we can get that twist out see it's got a twist in it get that twist out leaving get this up out of the way leaving this bottom loop down here because this is where we're going to tighten it okay now we're going to go to the other side doing the same thing finding the end we're going to go up through this middle slot Since we're coming from this side, we're going to go to the first slot past the actual working or the actual core strand. Don't count this. First slot right here. And go down through. Pulling out the majority of your excess. See? Just wanting to get a little bit of a twist. Get that out. Leaving this a little bit of a loop here. We'll get this all up out of the way. We say that. Got these two loops up here. We got these two loops down here. Making sure that when you go to tighten this, these two pieces aren't overlapping. They're side by side. So we come down. We grab the tops of these two these two bottom loops. Top loop, bottom loop, bottom loop. The top side. And we just kind of give them a loose cinch. This is the way I do it. Put my finger here and push everything up. I consider they're side by side. I'm pushing it up. And I'll reach up here right here and I'll give this a tight cinch. And it tightens up this side over here. All right. As I'm holding this in place, I'm going to reach and grab this one. And it's going to tighten this loop up. And as I tighten it, I'm leaning over, kind of looking, to make sure that this doesn't get twisted. It's not going to have a twist in it on that back core string. And that's that. Now, switch hands. Pushing up. We'll reach up here again. Grab the top of that loop and tighten it up. So we tighten that piece up. And then we're going to grab right here. Like I said, leaning over and looking at this loop as you tighten it to make sure it's not twisted. And if it is, correct it. See, it's twisting. It's, it's wanting to twist. So I'm going to go through here. I'm going to get this twist out. Now, it shouldn't twist now. Shouldn't, I say that. Top of the loop. Top of the loop. Tightens this up. I'm going to grab this and we're going to pull. And it's still wanting to twist. Really, it's just all kind of wants to twist on me. There we go. There we go. There we go. Now we can see a pattern starting to form. And that, that right there is your mechanics. That's your overs and unders. That's the easy part. Okay, now, as I, like, I, as I do in many of my videos, if you haven't got it by now, back up and watch again. You know. Um, 
But as I do in many of the videos, I'll say this. Let me back this out. Uh, let's see. As I say in a lot of my videos, <clears throat> a lot, of, a lot of YouTube tutorials they'll show you over here under there pull type. But they don't show you, or they don't tell you like I just did. You gotta grab the knot here to tighten that section up, and then grab the knot here to tighten it up, make sure it doesn't twist here, right? That's what I try to give in my videos. Okay? And I've learned that even though some of these videos don't explain it in words, if you watch what they do with their hands, where they grab it, and how they do it, and you think about it, it'll, you'll go, oh, I see why he's doing it that way. Once you start doing it, and you see what that person in the video is doing, you'll go, ah, I like that technique. He's grabbing it right there and doing this, and that's, does that make sense? That's why when I watch one of these tutorials on how to make some of these bracelets, Yes, I will listen to what they say, but I will also watch what their hands actually do, where they grab it, how they pull it, and all that kind of stuff. So, now that I've shown you the mechanics, the overs and unders, I'm going to just weave a couple of these with less commentary, and I'm going to do it a little faster so you can see my hands. Maybe it would help. Maybe it it won't. Some Everybody learns different. Some people learn through... Audio, some people learn visually, some people learn both. But that's why I do this. So those who learn visually, you can actually see what I'm doing. But I'm going to show you something. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. When I do this, I did all that in a very slow and accentuated to show you what I was doing. But when I actually weave this, I'm a little bit faster and I do it slightly different. The order of all that. Okay, so when you watch me, just watch what I'm doing. The steps are all the same. They're just slightly out of order from what I just showed you. So don't let that confuse you. Does that make sense? Okay, now, well, that's it. Here we go. We'll back out one more step. Over two, under one. Pulling out the majority of your excess. Coming up through the middle and down through that first slot. You see, I do all of one chord, as opposed to alternating back and forth. I just do all of one chord. Then I come to the other one and do it. I'm going to make sure I'm going to do this right. We're going to go We go through here, over three and under one. And then we come up through this middle slot. Wait, 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 wait. I did that wrong. I did this in the wrong place. So I have to correct myself. This one is supposed to go right here. This side. Yeah, there we go. It's always this side. It's something I'm doing when I weave. It's always this side that wants to get twisted. It doesn't always get twisted, but it, most often, if it twists, it's that side. There we go. Right, good. 
over three, under one, come up through the middle. See, I'm holding this loop because that's the one we want to maintain. That's it. I'm doing all of one cord in one fail swoop. Uh-oh, i got a knot in it. Got to get that out. Got to, when you do it, you got to go through this little loop right here. Going down, up through, maintaining this loop. things make sure we got the mechanics of it right and we reach up here the top of the loop tightening up that side all the while we're pushing everything up and then we reach here and we're going to tighten up that loop Leaning over, make sure we don't get a twist in it. Yeah, that one's going to want a twist. Okay, I corrected it. Same thing over here. Switching hands. From the top of the loop, tightening it up. this side. Oh, see that? One more time. Over three, under one. Come back up the middle. Going through the first slot. Switch to the other side. Over three, under one. I'm up to the middle. Oop, I did that wrong. I always did that wrong. This one stays on this side. Like that. And this one comes up to that middle slot from this side. Those are this side. Loose cinch. Make sure they're not crossed over or anything like that. Pushing up. Pulling. And then pull them here. Making sure there's no twist in it. We switch sides and we pull it. Make sure it's not twist. Like I said, I'm looking down at the side, but every now and then, you know, I've said this in a lot of my videos. When you're waving, I'm I'm looking over here at this side as I'm tightening it up to make sure it's not twisted. But just a general rule: anytime you're waving, every now and then, so I can kind of turn this, and I I can see it. However you need to do it, if you can turn that on your jig and see it, or if you actually have to take your jig and kind of flip the entire jig over, look at the back side of the weave. We want to make sure, this is what we want to make sure of, tension consistency. Not only the same amount of tension, every knot, every part of the knot, the same amount of tension, but also that you're pulling in the same direction for every part of the knot. Like, on this, just for example, if I if I have to tighten this up knot right here up by pulling straight out on the both working ends, the next time I do it, pull them 
straight out. The same direction. Consistency in direction of tension. You know, there are some knots that if you pull it one direction, it will cause that knot to look funny. And you have to pull it whatever direction it is. Every knot slightly different. But you have to make sure tension consistency. And that is both in the amount of tension and the direction of tension for every single repetition. All you do is you look at the repetition you just did and you compare it to the one you've done before. Make sure the sides are not sticking out further or pulled in tighter. That way the sides will be even. But you also look at just the layout of the knot to make sure that repetition and the next one and the next one and the next one are the same. Making one of these look good, neat, clean and tight or even is all about consistency. Both in the amount of tension and the direction of tension. That's all there is to it. Okay, now with all that said, I'm going to finish this one. I'm going to weave this one out to the end. When I get down to the end, I'll come back. I'll show you how I finish it. And then I'll show you how to do the stitching. The stitching on this one is not really that hard. Um, it does take a little time. But I'll say this just, just so we know. Here's your heads up. You can see, hopefully you can see this. This piece down the middle, that's one piece of stitching. The purple down this side, that's another piece of stitching. And the one on this side is another piece of stitching. It's three separate rows, runs of stitching. Right? So potentially, depending on, you know, what color scheme you're going with, you can do it in three different colors. But what I'm going to do today is have one color down the middle and the two stitchings that are on the outer edges is going to be a separate color. But they'll both be the same. Does that make sense? So stick around. I'll come back. I'll show you how to finish, how I finish this one off. And then I'll show you how to do the stitching. But stick around, folks. Okay, folks, I've got it weaved out to the end, and I'll show you how I'm going to finish it. Now, I'll go ahead and let you know, when I cut my cord, I, mis I mismeasured, and I cut it a little shorter than I would like. Hopefully, I'll be able to do this without having to get out my hemostats, but we'll see. Either way, I'll be able to make this work. Um, I, I got down to about right here, and I started looking at the ends of the cord and I thought yeah that looks short and I thought about it and I remembered how much I spooled off and measured and I was like oh I cut it a little too short I said well, let me make sure let me go ahead and weave it out make sure I said I might be able to make this work um, and I should be able to make this work but you know like I say I'm not perfect I make mistakes too and I, this is something that is, is extremely frustrating to me but, no matter, no matter, I'll zoom in and I'll show you how I'm gonna finish, how I finish this one off. Okay? Um, and I've already got my micro cord cut and measured over here for the center stitch. What we're gonna do, I'll show you how I finish this, but on this one, the one I'm doing right now, I'm gonna do this center stitch in this gold color. And then I'm gonna do this out, the outside edges in a maroon. But well, I'll show you that when I get there. But let's let's do this first. Okay, I'll zoom in and I'll show you how I finish this one off. Basically, if you can look, you can still see the core strands on the either side, and you kind of got a little bit of a, a gap right here in between the middle. And instead of trying to do a whole nother knot, a whole nother repetition, all I'm going to do is basically take these two cords because they're on the back side and I'm going to just feed them down through this center and that's going to take up the cover up the rest of this core strand it's going to kind of excuse me it's going to kind of keep in line with you know the nature of the weave itself right and like I say this is going to be a little bit of a tight fit so you always need enough cord that way you can fold it back over itself and get your fit down in there now this I'll be able to do, but when I go to back weave it, that's where the struggle will come in. But I can get this through here, just right down through the center. 
and we see how it basically it kind of instead of having these two center pieces it's still it comes just like the piece it wraps around from the edge pull it down we're going to do the other one the same way right through the center see the whole time we've been going over three and under one now we're just going to go over the two core strands that way we go right down through the center right there pull it down I'm going to go ahead and take this thing off the jig. Okay. Get the jig out of the way. Now, let's see. Am I going to have enough room to do this? Ooh, that's going to be a tight fit. Here, I'll zoom in and I'll show you. Normally, what I would do... On this one, the way I would finish it, obviously this, sorry, this would be a little bit longer. That one, when I go to fold it back over itself, the tip of the fin, I can get it up under these two last wrap arounds on this core, on that core strand on that side. And I do the same thing for this one. I might be able to pull this thing tight enough and get it to work. We're going to see. Give me a second, folks. Yeah, it's not going to quite work like I want it to. But, there is a trick. Maybe I can do this. Let me see. I'll back out and I'll show you what I'm going to do. If you've never seen this, put this in the tool belt as a, a paracord hack, if you will. You can take your fit off. What you can do, sometimes you can't do it because you will, the weave's so tight. But you'll hopefully this will make sense. Take it, and normally what I'd do is I'd feed it up over. See how this green piece goes across that core strand in this direction? Right here, this piece right here at the tip of the fit. Right? And the next one up. I would go up under those two from this direction while it was still attached. Okay? But what, what you can do, maybe I can do this. If this is not too tight, I may be able to do this. But you can get this started and go ahead and get it up under there. Yeah, it might be a little too tight to do this. But you can get it started. See how I'm going up under those two. Yeah, I don't think this is going to work. I think this is going to be a little too tight. But what you do, I'll show you what I do. Give me a second, got to push this through. I'll tell you what I'm doing off camera so you can see it. What I just did is because it's so tight, I can't push it through there with my hand. What I'll do is I'll take the tip of this fit and I'll put it over here on the, the edge of my desk. This is my desktop. I'll put it on the edge of my desk and I'll hold it and I'll push it and it'll push it through. And if I get it through like that, I can usually get the other end of it and kind of work it a little bit. Because it loosens it up enough and you can pull it through. But what you'll, what will we do? Let's see. Maybe I can do this. Let's see. Is this going to work? What, what I'm trying to do is see if I can spin this fit. Now these things are very tight, but sometimes you can, you can spin that thing. I can do it this way. I don't prefer doing it this way, but it can be done this way. Because this will leave tool marks in the fit, especially the soft brass, but it can be done. But what would I do? Normally I'd want to be able to do this, just twist it with one finger. But what you can do, now that you got it through there, you can come back here. I'm putting the tip back in there. And if you do it just right, you can spin this and it'll tighten it back up on that end. And then you can just pull it through. Now I'm going to attempt this. I don't quite have enough hands to do this. Here, let me back out so I stay in frame a little bit better. But get it up here like this. So I don't quite have enough hands to do this because I got to put this in here in the end and kind of push it to keep pressure on it but then I gotta spin the 
spin the fit and it'll tighten it back up on there. But <coughs> I gotta hold the bracelet as I do all this so the bracelet stays still but the fit moves. And the whole problem is I've got it woven so tight. <coughs> problem is I cut it, I cut my cord a little too short. But we can make this work. We can make this work. I think I can. If I can get a hold of it just right, get it in there. to start I think it's in my spinning it the right way let's see hang on yeah that should be the right way All you gotta do is get it in. Ah. Give me a second, folks. Let me fix this and I'll come right back. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that, folks. Sorry about that, folks. You know, you run into issues. You run into issues, but we learn how to fix them. Okay, I'm gonna say the hack, right? I'm gonna show you a hack on a hack. <laughs> when that thing's so tight like that, you know, normally I just grab my pliers and do it. I can't, I can't get it to do it. I can't get it off because it's so tight or whatever. What you can do is you come back here with your cord and you can rotate it the opposite direction. Right? Get you some twists in it. And then come back here and stick it in that fit. And then all them twists I put in it, rotate all those twists out as I'm tightening it back into my fit. If you just get it started. Get it in there just enough. You see what I'm saying? Now you can take it. Maybe I can pull this through with my hand. If not, I'll show you. Yeah, it's going to be tough, so tight I can't pull it through. But what you do, this is the way I do this. Okay? You can do this one or two ways. You can either grab a hold of it with, your, with some pliers and rotate these pliers as you're pulling it. And it'll ease itself through. I don't like doing it that way. I'd rather rotate the bracelet as I'm pulling. So I'm going to grab here and I'm going to pull. But instead of trying to rotate this fid because it's soft brass and it's going to put a whole bunch of tool marks in it, I'll spin the bracelet as I'm pushing it. Let's see how it's working itself through. I don't like doing this because it, it scratches up the fids, which leaves little marks which potentially could snag later down the road when you use them. But you can always come back with some fine grit sandpaper and get that stuff out. Okay, now that I got it in there, I got it through there, right? It's always a way. I'll make sure I don't get no twists and I'm going to pull it through. Now this one over here is kind of twisted, but we're going to fix that. Okay, now we got that. Problem solved. Okay, now, like I said, the center stitch, where's the other one at? I'll show you. The center stitch, I'll zoom in, I'll show you how to do this. This, this is a pretty simple stitch, not anything complicated. 
it goes right through the bracelet. You just got to make sure you don't poke the micro cord every time you go through. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to come back here. You can see on this one where I've went through. Just like I went through these two bottom ones down here. Just like I went through. What I'm going to do over here is I'm going to go through these top two. Now the thing is, you're eventually going to have three pieces of cord. One on this piece, this piece, and this piece. And me, I usually run them all through in the same place. That way there's one cut and burn here. As opposed to having one here and one over here. I try to keep them in the same place. Okay? So, that's where we're going to anchor it at. Up here. At the top of the brace, the display side where we started weaving. So we're going to flip it over. Now you can anchor it on either core string. It doesn't matter which one you do, but let's see. Either one of them should work. So we're going to go up under here. You see that? We'll run it through. Now this one's tight too. But I think I can get that one through there with my bare hands. Alright, press it down. And get out all these twists and tangles. And then we pull the excess through. Leaving a little bit on the end. Leaving you enough to work with. Right there. Okay, now, what we're going to do, I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm going to explain it, and then I'll show you. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. What we're going to do, basically, is we're going to come from where we are, and we're going to go down, and we're going to go through the back side of the bracelet, through the front, coming out the front. But we're going to come out below this first center part. Where everything, this first repetition, we're going to come out down here. And we're going to go up. Right? Now let, me, let me get all this lined up and I'll show you. Basically, that one's kind of twisted. Right below where these two, two pieces are. We're going to go right through here. And it's going to come out right here above my fingernail. Now be mindful that you don't poke through your cord. Just kind of look down in there. See where you want it. And it'll go through. It goes through pretty easy. You can see the tip of it right there. Right? Okay. Now, this is, this is how we do this. We just pull this through, no big deal. Pull your excess through. Make sure that when you pull it through, like I always say, make sure you get your twist out. And that when you go to pull this, you don't pull it so hard that it pulls all this out. And you have to redo it. So I usually like try to hold my thumb on it. Get right here. And just give it a little snug. Okay. Now, here's where the pattern of this comes in. What we're going to do, now that we're in a place to start, we're going to go up one. From below where these two pieces cross, basically, we're going to go up one and through the bracelet. Now, when we come on the back side, we're going to go down two and through the bracelet. That way, we'll come out down here at this next one. And then we'll go up one. Go through the bracelet and down too. So basically, if you look at it from the side, what we're actually doing is we're going through the bracelet and we're going up a little bit, coming back through the bracelet and going down further, going through the bracelet, up a little bit and through the bracelet. Does that make sense? And you just do that and you work your way all the way down to the end. That's all it is. It's not very hard. You just got to, you know, anytime you're stitching, make sure you don't poke through your cords and stuff like that. So from where we are, we're going to go toward the top, toward the buckle. We're going to go through right there. 
Now this is kind of a tight fit because you got the hitch and everything. Everything kind of tight up there. So, you know, be mindful. Try to get it the way we want. And sometimes, like I've said before, sometimes if you can't get it started from this direction, come around here and kind of find where, find where it wants to go. Right? And kind of stick it in there. And work and loosen that, that space up and then pull back out and go back around. Now you can see the hole. You can actually see the hole right there where you want to go through. See? And just pull it through. That's it. We did that. Mindful of your twist. Get the twist out. When you get right here, just give it a little snug. Okay, now we're going to go to the back side of the bracelet. Now, we're going to go down to where we just went through. We're going to skip that one and go to the next one. So basically we're going to go down too, right? And we're going to go through and we're going to come out down here. You just look at it. See, it goes through there pretty easy. The stitching on this one is pretty easy. It looks really good, but it's it's pretty easy. It takes you a little time to do it, but you're not having to find your way through the knot. It it goes right through. Some of those stitchings I do, yeah, you gotta be you gotta you gotta be able to feel inside there and know where you're at to get you got this. This one is pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. It's a it's a pretty good bracelet. But you see how I was up here. I went down one, two. You do, just kind of give it a little snug. That way it'll pull it down into that little groove this there. Okay? And we flip it back over, and we're going to go up one. That way we get the piece of gold right in here, right? We're going to go through here. Now, this, this is just me. Do this however you want. But when you go through here, you come out the back side, be mindful that you don't poke through that piece of micro cord right there because we're going to come out. So when you go through, kind of be mindful of that. Do it kind of slow. You see how I got it coming on this the needle, the tip of the needle right there is on this side of that piece of micro cord. Now when I do this, I'm going to try to come on this side of that micro cord every time I go down. That way, these angles and the way this sits, if you look at it, if you look close at this and pay real close attention, you can see some of these pieces of purple right here. They've got a slight angle to them. They're not completely straight up and down. At first glance, you don't notice, but when you do the stitching and you realize how it's done, you realize some of these pieces actually have a little bit of an angle on them, the way they angle. Maybe you can see this, let me see. You kind of, you, yeah, I don't know if it's showing up on the camera or not. It's because on this one, I, I go through and every one of them come out on this side. It comes out, I go down two, through, up, it comes out on this side. Doesn't really matter. I just try to maintain consistency. That's all it is. You just pull it through. Pull your slack through. Mindful of that, those twists. And you get it right there. Just give it a little snug. And it pops it down in place. We'll flip it back over. We come out here and we're going to go down one, two, and we're going to go through right here. See? Goes through pretty easy. Pull your excess though. Mindful of your twist. When you get it right here, just kind of give it a little snug so it seats it down in that, in that groove right there. Put back around, and we're going to go from here up one. Look at that. You see how 
if you look at that piece of micro cord right there, I don't know if you can see that moving or not. It's because that thread is right behind that piece of micro cord. Don't want to jam it through the middle of it, so you you take your your needle and you tilt it just slightly. If need be, you can push that piece of cord out of the way. That way that needle will come out on one side or the other. Like I said, I try to keep it coming out on the same side every time. It really doesn't matter. That's just, but that's just me. That's the attention to detail. I want even the back of it to look the same. And you pull it through. Get down to the end. <coughs> Excuse me. Just give it a little snub. And we can see it's starting. And that's all there is to that. Again, I'll do it one more time. From here, we go down two. One, two. We're going to go through right here. And it's going to come out right there where my fingernail is. Right See that? Pull it through. A lot of times you'll see me do this. Kind of if if the way it's the way I'm stitching or whatever, have it run over my thumb. That way I can see these twists back here. See that twist? And I can kind of get them out as I'm pulling it through. Get it right here. Give it a, a snug and it pulls it down in that groove. Do it again. We go from where we are, and we go up one. So it's kind of a one two combo. All right? Pull it through. And then we just snug it down. And that's it. And, you know, all, basically all you're going to do, you're going to do that all the way down to the end. Now, go ahead and tell you, when you get down here where this is, it's, it's, a, it's tight. It's real tight right there. But it'll go through there. You're going to have to kind of feel your way through, but you can get it. It will go through there and whatever. I'm, I'll come back and I'll show you how I finish it off. And then I'll show you how I do the, the one side on it. Alright, so stick around. We'll, get this a, we'll stitch this thing out to the end. Okay, I got the center stitching done. You just take it all the way down to the end, and you go through this last part, and when you come back, just back weave it up in here like you did your green, right? Um, that's all there is to that. It's it's not hard. It's not hard. It just takes a little time to do. Okay, now for the side stitching, the side spiral stitching, as I call it. It's, it's pretty easy also, it's pretty straightforward. Um, just have to be mindful of what you're doing. Okay, now I'll say this before I get started. You can use, it just depends on your personal weaving style. You can use micro cord to do this. But what I have found um, on some of these weaves that have this, the way it's done on the side, if you use micro cord, what will happen sometimes is that when you go to wrap it around here, I'll show you on this one that we've already got made. When it goes to that stitching wraps around there and you go to pull it tight, what will happen is it'll it'll get pulled and it'll go in between the two pieces of 550. And basically it gets lost in the crack and you can't see it because the micro cord is so thin. Right? So, what I do is I'll use a piece of 95. It's a little bit thicker cord, and it doesn't get lost in the crack. It actually, once you go to pull it tight, it spreads those two pieces of 550 apart just a little bit, and you can still see the coloring of it. Now, mind you, when you do it that way, by the time you get down the further you get down here to the end, the tighter it starts to get because you're, all those little 
gaps you're creating, you know, in between them pieces of 550, yeah, it starts to get real tight down here at the end. So when you're pulling it, it, it can you just got to be mindful of that. Um, there's a few weaves like that. Some, let's see if I, I've got some examples over here. Like this one, for example, it has the edge. It's the same style, but between this this piece of green and this piece of green, there's an actual gap there, right? So when I did the stitching on this, I used two pieces of micro cord. One piece was so small that you couldn't. It didn't get lost in the crack, but you couldn't quite see it. So I just used two. Now, I could have used a piece of 95, but at the time, I didn't have that color in 95, right? But that gap is big enough that it, when you go to tighten it, it won't get lost in the crack. Make sense? Um, I think that's the only one I have on hand. This one right here, the first one I made like this, when I did that side stitching, I used a micro cord, and it got lost in the crack. So the next one I made, this one, I used 95, Imperial Red 95, So and you can see it. It doesn't get lost in that crack and disappear. Makes sense? So, just depends. Now, looking at this one, there's a little bit... Right here on the front side, you can see there's a little bit of gap right there. But when you turn it on the side, you see the gap is not as pronounced, right? So, I'm going to use a piece of 95. Now you can try it with micro cord um, and see what it looks like. Do a couple of runs down it, and it might look okay. It just depends on your weaving style, how, how much you pushed it up to the top, how big these gaps are. A lot of variables come into it. So, you know, find you a piece of a sh shorter piece of micro cord and do a couple of wraps and see what it looks like. And if it doesn't look right, if it disappears in the crack and gets lost, you can't see it. I would suggest 95. That's the way I've solved the problem. So, with that said, I got a piece of 95 maroon, and I'm gonna show you how to do this. It's not very difficult. Come back here on the back side. Let's zoom in. Let me get the light out of the way. Let's zoom in a little bit. Now, all I'm going to do is take this piece of 9 to 5, and I'm going to anchor it in the same spot. I'm going to run up under these two pieces of green and come out the top. And then we're going to go one, one direction for this side, and then we'll do another piece, and we'll go over here. But I'll show you how to do it on one side. Let's see. This it really doesn't matter which side you do first. We'll do this, though. We'll get it up under there. Just like before, get it up under there. Oof. It's tight. Oof. That's tight. Give me a second. Even a little bit. Now, all we're going to do okay, on the non display side, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to this side first. I'm going to do this side. Okay, so what we're going to do, if we look, all we're going to do. You see how this piece of green, it wraps around this outer core strand. And then it goes down one and it wraps around again. All we're going to do is follow the top side of that piece of green. 
and then we're going to go through right there right and then when we come out we're going to come out right here so in a sense all it's doing is this piece of cord is basically spiraling around this outer core strand and we're just following this groove here here and here make sense so basically take your take it and get it in that groove where you want it right that's where you're gonna go but what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through here kind of at an angle so that when we come out we come out right here Does that make sense I'll show you and it's, it's not that hard you just got to get a good angle you got to get an angle on it this way and right here at the beginning it's a little tight get it through there without poking it through the rest of the cords okay there we go we see that it's going to follow this top groove and it goes in right here above this piece but when it comes out it comes out on the back side at the b below it right so we just run it through sure seats in that little in the groove we want it okay and then we just pull it make sure you don't pull this oops sorry sorry out of frame when we go to pull this make sure it doesn't pull this piece right here and suck it through so just kind of hold it see how it did it pulled it through right there I don't want it to pull through that much give me a second I can fix this Hold that right there and just give it a little pull. And we see how it kind of falls in that groove right there. And that's all we're going to do. Now, we're going to follow the next groove down. Right there. And we're going to go through right here. So, get our needle. And just follow it around to right there. We see that follows this top groove around, and when it goes through comes out in the next groove. Push it through. Mindful of your twist. Get your twist out. Get it right there in that groove. And then just kind of give it a when you go to tighten it up, it'll pull it down in that groove. See how it went in between them two pieces? Now, at first, it's pretty easy. But as you get further and further and further down, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And that, that little pull maneuver to get it to go in between that in that groove, it, it gets a little, you got to put a little bit more pull on it to get it to do it so just be mindful but that's that's it it's not a hard stitch coming out here and where this groove is we just follow it around to right here we 
Pues se ve, voy a comer. Es verdad. Pull it through. Line from your twist. Make sure you got it where you want it. And when you get it there, just you'll see it kind of seat down in that groove. Boop. See? I know on camera you can't quite see it very well. Just because, there you go, you can see it. But imagine if you were using micro cord right here. It's thinner. It's thinner than this. And that piece right there, it would disappear in there and you wouldn't be able to see it. That's why I use a little bit thicker cord when I do sometimes. Not always. It just depends on the actual weave of the bracelet. But I found for this specific weave, 95 usually works pretty good. We'll do it one more time. We'll go from where we are. We follow the groove around. And we go through right there. We'll come out right there. Now, before you go to tighten it all up, make sure you got your cord where you want it. You want your cord coming across this way. All right? We just pull it through. So this I'll twist it up. We get it untwisted as we go. Before we tighten it all the way up, we, we get it right there in that groove where we want it. And then we give it a little, you watch it, it'll disappear in there. Or not disappear, but it'll seat down in that groove the way we want it. Okay? And that's all there is to it. Now on this one, like I say, as you do this and you get further and further and further down this bracelet, it's because you're putting that little bit of space in there, it's going to get tighter and tighter and tighter. So when you go to push it through, it gets tighter. You'll notice it. And then when you go to tighten it up and have it seat down in that groove, it's going to take a little bit more pulling to get it to do it. But it, you can do it. And you can always come back with like your needle. Take your needle and kind of put it on top of that cord kind of press it down in there a little bit. See what I'm saying? And it'll, it'll, it'll sink down in that groove. But you just stitch this one all the way out to the end. And the way I did it is when I did that very last one, I come around this last, last piece and I went down through the center. And just like we did on the other ones. Just run it back up through those two pieces. And leave you a little sticking out. But I'm going to run this one out to the end. And I'll finish it. And then I'll do the other side. And I'll get down to the almost the very end. And I'll come back and I'll show you how I finish it off. And then, you know, we'll cut and burn the rest of the bracelet. And we'll do the trial by fire. Where I put it on my wrist to see if it actually is going to fit. Which I know it's going to because I've measured the, what did I say? Wrist measurement plus add to equals jig measurement. I did all my math, so I know it's going to fit. But we'll do the trial by fire, as I call it. And you'll see me for the first time put it on my wrist and see how good it does fit. So sit, stick around. I'll be right back. Okay, folks, I'm back. I got it stitched out on both sides all the way down to the end. And I did the... I got the last two little spots to do, and I'm going to show you how I finish it off, and I'll cut and burn it, and we'll do the trial by fire. Alright, so, like I say, I can, I can feel this. I told you, as you do that, and you work your way down, it will get tighter, and I can feel it. It's tight. It's tighter than when I, before I started stitching. So these last two right here, they're going to be kind of tight to get it through there, but we'll get it through there. No, no worries. Again, we're going, same principle, just following the groove around, coming out here, following that groove around. We're going to go through right here and come out. I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing. Get the light, maybe. Maybe that'll help a little bit. I don't know. Okay. If 
follow the groove room and we're gonna go through right here like I said this it, it gets kind of tight down here at the end so you just kind of got to be patient get it through there yeah there we go got it through there we can see the tip of it sticking out get the twist out Get it right there. We'll pull it so it'll, it'll go down in the, in the in that groove. And like I say, it gets a little, gotta put a little bit more force on it to get it to go in there. Okay, and this last one, you can see what I did over here. Like I said, it, when we when we did here, let's turn it around. Let's orientate it correctly. When we did the actual weave, we we did all this, and we got here down to the ear, the end, and I did sort of a, a half knot, if you will. All I did was took those cords and just wrapped them around from the outside and went down through the center in, in order to fill that last little bit of cord strand. And that's all I'm going to do with this last piece. Just wrap it around, following that groove where it's at, just following that groove and just going through the center. That's all, that's, that's all it is. Give it a little to seat it down in there. Yeah, being at the end of the bracelet, they're not they don't want to line up completely straight. Those two maroon pieces aren't completely lined up. They're kind of offset a little bit. But as I've said, the beginning and the end is always going to be a little off. Never going to get it to look perfect just because of the space you're dealing with. Okay. Now, on the back side, all I'm going to do, the other piece, I ran a piece of gold micro on this side and the other piece of maroon 95 on this side. Now, that's kind of tight. And this over here is tight also, but I'm going to run this piece through on th these two where this piece of green is coming out. That's the way I'm going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to struggle getting it through there. I'm going to go ahead and tell you that. It's tight. But we'll get it through there. All I'm doing is kind of wiggling it. Just getting it through there. Okay, it's... It's through there. Now, know what I'm going to do. Like I say, it's so tight, I can't push it with my hand. I'm going to put this up against the edge of my desk, and I'm going to push. And I'm going to make sure my finger's out of the way, so when it goes through there, I don't get stabbed by the end of this thing. And I'll push it through as far as I can get it. Need be, like on this, like I'm, I can't get a hold of that. I can't pull it through there, it's so tight. So, as I say, I'll take my pliers and I'll grab a hold of it and I'll pinch it. Now these pliers, just so everybody knows, these flat nose pliers, they have no teeth on them. They have no grooves on them. Right? I wouldn't suggest using ones that have serrations or grooves on them. Because you will definitely eat up your, the, mar up your fid. But grab a hold of it. And instead of rotating the fid to this way, spin the bracelet as you're as I'm pulling it this way. It works itself through. When it goes through, it's gone. So I'm holding it away from myself. So I don't jam it into my chest, which would not be good considering the fact that the surgery I had. You can feel it. You can feel it kind of give, and it's not so tight. So you know you don't have to put as much force on it right here at the end. That way, when it does go come through, see, here we go. Here we go. Now that I got it through, we're gonna pull it through. And pull it through. Make sure you ain't got a twist in it. Get the twist out. 
pull it through. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and cut this off. That's, that's a pretty good piece of scrap. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and burn it into this so it doesn't fray any more than it has. Put my needle back over here in the little holder I got. Put the piece of scrap down there in my scrap bucket. Okay, now, like I, as I said, I always say this. Before you cut and burn these things, flip it over and look at it and make sure that all the slack and everything looks right. Because after you cut and burn it, you can't do, you're hard pressed to make any corrections on it. So we want to make sure the thing looks right. And I always give these things like one little last little snow to make sure they're, they're tight. Okay. These right here, I'm going to bend them back up. That way when I cut them, they'll, they'll be sticking up as opposed to laying flat. That way I can get to them and burn them as opposed to potentially burning the bracelet. Which it happens, it happens. We try not to, we try not to, but it does happen. And I'm going to cut these a little bit longer than I normally would. That way there's actually something there <coughs> sticking up that I can get the flame on and potentially not on the bracelet. Does that make sense? Okay. Your smoothing tool, whatever you use. I use the end of my Nodder's tool. Whatever you use, have it on the ready. Don't be going, don't have this hot and melty in a time sensitive, remember what I'm And you're trying to find your smoothing tool. Have it at the ready, right there. I'm just kind of bend this back out of the way. Come out at another angle. This is the way I do this. Let me do this so I can make sure I can see the flame. Yeah. yeah let me tilt this light just a little bit so I can see my flame better. Like that, and then just smooth it out. Give it a second to cool off a little bit. You don't want to stick a, but reach up over your finger, make sure it don't have no little nicks or burrs on it. That's gonna, you know, rub the inside of your the skin to irritate your skin. Make sure it's fairly smooth. Okay, now down here. Normally, when I would do this, I would put all these ends in one spot. Well, the nature of this weed doesn't really <laughs> lend to that. So, I've got this piece of Olive Drab 550 and this piece of Maroon, which I should have, which I normally do this, I should have did this, just so this doesn't get frayed. Even though we're about to cut it off, I always try to do this. It's a good habit getting into it. That way it doesn't fray. Even though we're about to cut it off, you know, just to make sure, give it a chance to cool off a bit. Okay. But we got this piece of Maroon 95 and this piece of Olive Drab 550 is going through these two on that side. Now over here on this side we got the 550, the Micro, and the 95, and they're all going through, right? Now it's two, they're going through in two separate places, but they're right next to each other. So what I'm going to do, this is the way I do this. I'll cut them separate, but I will burn them all at once. That's my goal anyway. Okay. So, we'll take them. And as always, we're going to look at the bracelet. Make sure everything looks good on this side. I'm going to give them a final snug. Make sure everything's tight. Okay, now, like I said, we're going to cut them separately, but I'm going to attempt to burn them all at once so it's all one piece. Leave a little bit, just like on the top side. I'm going to leave a little bit longer. That way I can get to them without possibly burning the bracelet itself. Because you see, if you look at it, you see how where I've cut those two. They lay flat. So if you leave a little bit of length when you go to I'll show you. Let me let me let me cut the other side and I'll show you what I'm what I'm 
getting at here. It'll make sense when I show you. Leave a little bit more length than I normally would. Okay, all the scraps, get them out of the way. They go in the trash can. Okay. Now you see how these on this side, they kind of, they're curling up. One's on this side, not so much. They're kind of laying flat. But you leave them, I cut these a little bit longer than I normally would. And the reason why is this. Take that bracelet and you can bend it. Kind of bend it back on itself a little bit. That way you can come at it from this angle with that flame. You can burn all of these. And they're a little bit longer. That way it doesn't burn the top part up here because they're sticking out just a little bit further. Does that make sense? That's what I see in my mind. When I'm doing this, that's what I'm thinking. Make sense? Always looking at it. Because you don't... What we're trying to do is burn the, the ends of these cords on. We don't want to burn any of the rest of the bracelet. And I, and I see people do that. It's because they've cut these too long. Right? Now, hey, I, I, I burn the bracelet every now and then. But if I see it starting to burn, I take that flame away from it. And I'll get another angle on it. But I'll, I'll start on one side and kind of work that torch, the heat, back and forth across all the ends of those cores. That way they all get kind of molting the same amount. And then I'll come back and I'll flatten them all out together. That way they all join together into one piece right there. And as always, let it cool off a minute. And then just run your finger across it. Make sure it doesn't have any hard tips, teats, burrs, edges, nothing like that. Because we don't want, to, when we wear it, we don't want it to irritate our skin. Okay, now, we got it done. Let's scroll out. Or zoom out, I should say. Get all our tools out of the way. We'll look at it. Oh, you see the finished product. Olive drab. These are my, these. I love these colors together. Olive drab, maroon, and gold. Okay. Try by fire. This is the part right here. Dry by fire. I'm gonna take this one off. And we're gonna see if this will fit. I, I, I made this. I sized this to fit my wrist. So we're gonna see if it actually fits and how well it fits. We'll go ahead and kind of curl it up. I can get it on. It's a little easier to get it on. All right. Hopefully I can do this. I can do this on camera right here. Sometimes I can't do this one-handed. I have to put it up in my chest to get it to work. No, nope, that nope, went on there. Oh, yeah, that's a good fit right there. It's not too tight, and it's not too loose. I can get the tip of my finger under it. That's the way I want it. I want it so it's got a little bit of give, you know, but I don't want it so tight, and I'll show you. The one I had on is a little tighter than I would like, and you'll see how it leaves... Right? I don't like the bracelet to do that after you wear it a while. I don't want it to leave marks on my arm. Right? I'd rather it be, be a little bit looser. And this one, this one has been sized to my preference personally. Now if I can get it back on. Plus if you got it sized a little tight, you potentially will pinch your pinch your skin in that buckle when it goes to clasp together, which you know it hurts. But you know. but there we go. It turned out pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. We'll hold it back up here so everybody can see it. Up here at the top. Oh, let's get the light up there so we can see that one. Olive drab, maroon, and gold. And this is a stitched. Modified Concrete Jungle. Original design by Joe Clegg. Modified by Cetus. And stitched by P. 
Clear Gorge of Kindness. But there we go. That's how I make a stitched, modified concrete jungle. And with that, I'll end this video like I'm in them all. Keep it neat, keep it clean, and keep it tight. Happy weaving, folks.